Greetings, everyone! It is I, it is Darren Welcome to the Dracovan Empire, and welcome back to Galarian. Yes, we're diving back into Pathfinder, the role-playing game's world, and we're visiting the Mwangi Expanse and heading to the city-state of Mazal. Are you ready? Because you're going to have to not only be ready for a trip to the Mwangi Expanse, get some adventuring gear, prepare your expedition, go to Mazali, well, you might need some passes. Because, well, you're not very big on outsiders very often, and so you might have to get some special permissions to visit there. Be ready. Get your paperwork in order. We're heading deep. So if I want to be mentioned Mazali to any of you out there, well, where would I look into this more? Where would I research this? You can always Google it online and find some information about it. But there are some sources that you could check out. The Lost Omens World Guide from 2nd Edition. Uh, Heart of the Jungle provides you some information related more to 1st Edition. And the Mwangi Expanse gives a nice chunk of the information on the city-state and former country that it was. To give you some sense. So there are some book sources you could definitely dive deeper into. Let's talk about Mazali. And I use this map here because of the Mwangi Expanse thing, and it's way down there in the bottom, in the middle, under the Screaming Jungle is where Mazali is. What is Mazali? It is, in fact, the largest city in the Grundy continent, south of Kapitesh, in what is still called the Inner Sea region. The Inner Sea region is basically northern Grund and uh, southern Avastian, and this is still part of that region around the Inner Sea, technically. Being on the south end of the Long Expanse means it's very close to the edge of where that's kind of considered, probably kind of talk about it. It's a, it's an interesting place. But it is a very large city. One that you won't find this large, again, south of Cavendish. It's ruled by this Walkenna. Uh, very strange being that we're going to really have to dive into, but we'll wait to do that. Because uh, it'll be there. So as I said, it's a city-state, it's a nation. If we're looking at the nation as a whole, ruled from Mazali by Walkenna, and it's a theocratic dictatorship. Mmm. One of the major deities is Walkenna. Mmm. We've heard this before in other cities around uh, Galarian, but there's more to it this time in this. There are some other deities, some various languages, Mwangi, Mzun, uh, Mzunu, our major languages, and Koar, Luar, and uh, Telhar are the other deities that are worshipped. As for the city itself, it's a metropolis. It's around 37,000 individuals, give or take, most of which are human, with a very small population of non-humans there. And it tends to be a very lawful place, too. It's a dictatorship. It's not there. And their mummified child god is the ruler. Yes, Volkenna is a mummified child god. Let that sink in for a second. The city itself stands on a fertile floodplain of the, uh, I'm trying to butcher this, not butcher this name, Pasuango River, which is one of the, and one of the tributaries of the Korir River in the Expanse. As I said, it's south of the Screaming Jungle, it's east of the uh, the Vidrian city of Kalabuto. It was built on wetlands between the Pasuango River and the desert to the south. It stands on soft, rich earth that can flood during the rainy season. It's large stone. It has very large stone structure, structures like the Temple of the Deathless Child, the High Temple, the Muan Muansia Hall, and the Sun Man statue that re reside on deep foundations surrounded by slabs of flagstone that poke above the soil. Enormous trees interwide their roots around sturdy curtain walls and stone temple complexes, seamlessly blending with the architectural designs. Many of these structures are encircled by protective moats, serving both as a defensive manner and for drainage during those rainy seasons. In addition to the temple, temple of the Deathless Child, which dominates the city skyline, it is filled with ancient shrines dedicated to all matters of entities, some of which are actively used to this day, the lesser of the other deities I mentioned, and others which have been turned into markets or residents, but they were once temples of some time. Uh, Mazali also contains dozens of underground tombs where only capstones are visible. And these also do attract grave robbers who seek to plunder them for treasure, but then again, outsiders are not really mindful, so it's like you 
you're double-edged swording there. You're trying to not only break in the place that doesn't really want you, but they also try to rob their graves. Good luck to you. Good luck to you on that one. Just, just good luck. It's a great idea. There is the city of Mazal. You can see the nice temple um, just dominating it. So, Mazali is a very old city. It is thousands of years old at this point in time. Being it, it's 47, uh, 24 in the current history time. So keep that in mind right now. So pre pretty, pretty recent. But, it was founded in negative 308 AR. So we're talking like 5,000 years ago that it was founded. That's very 5,000 years. It was founded by warrior monarchs who claim to be descendants of the god Choar. That's why Choar is worshipped here. It's similar to the pharaohs of ancient Osiria, in a way, that they claim to be descendants of gods. Dead royals and retainers were mummified so they continued to protect Mazali after death. The city conquered the surrounding areas, but expansion became more and more difficult. Even in that ancient time, it's still the expanse. The royal family became obsessed with blood sport. Hey, blood sport! So they turned soldiers into gladiators. They demanded children from nearby areas and trained them to be gladiators. Lavish prizes were offered to victors. Foods, fabrics, incentives to attract larger audiences. Yeah. So this lasted for a good 4,000 years. So in 3967, 4,000 years later, this Mazali Empire finally crashed. About 2,000 years ago. A group of governors and shamans, calling themselves the Council of uh, Mwani, Mwansia, Mwan, Mwan, Mwan Yisa, Yisa, Mwan Yisa. I'll get it right eventually. That's close enough. Mwan Yisa. <laughs> Overthrew the royal family and destroyed all of their mummies that they left behind except one, the young prince Volcana. Now you say, Volcana's a lot. At this point in time, Kenna's still a corpse. Under the rule of this council, the empire fell apart. The city was reduced in size and importance, and this great empire collapsed into what is close to Mazali today. About a hundred years ago, members of the council prophesied the rise of a new empire, and soon after they uncovered the remains of Walkenna. Basically, one of the, in one of the many tombs. Well, Kenna was the only one that wasn't destroyed. At least as far as they know. And so this one that was left was discovered. According to their legends, while Kenna in life was a mighty ma magician able to call down fire from the heavens at a probably young age. Um, very interesting there. They view this as an omen, and they put the mummified corpse on display, drawing on thousands of pilgrims, and these visitors brought wealth to the city. So, yeah, cool. More prosperity for Mazali. But this brought rumors. Hey, there's a lot of tombs here. Treasures of the mummy that were discovered. And the Chalaxian overlords of Sargava, and especially the city of Kalabutu, which was nearby, heard this. Hmm, treasure, you say? Wealth, you say? Uncovered from ancient mummies that we don't care about desecrating, you say? They raised an army. They attacked Mazali. But they were defeated in 4610, about 100 years ago, when Walkenna sprang to life and rained fiery death upon the invading army. Kenna became a mummy, an active mummy. Walkenna then claims Mazali as his own and became its absolute ruler. Mwangi forces then pushed back the invading Sargabin forces towards Halabuto, but when they eventually defeated and thrown back to the eastern banks of the Lost River of Tears in 4675, by a Sargavan army under the command of General uh, Tarrance. So, basically, under the call of Walkana, the army of this city fought back and basically tried to create an empire and were defeated. Walkana still dreams of military conquest continuing after this botch invasions. And his forces have guerrilla strikes against the defenders in Kalbuto uh, that start from 4678. And they have sacked it technically three times. 
uh, with the first one in 4684. So he sends forces that have, you know, lesser forces to sack the city. Three times in recent years. Um, the current general, Albion, uh, commander of the military forces, sends spies to Mazali to keep track of things, to see when military preparations are going to be for a, a raiding army. It's important to notice here. Important to na- note here. Kana has personally not taken to the field except for that first time he defended the city. Keep that in mind. Kana has only attacked once. And I was defending the city. Here's Walkana. So Wakana rules the city with an iron fist. The council of uh, Muan Yisa still exists, but it's kind of advisory to him and kind of worshipped him as a <coughs> divine being at this point in time. Supports the religion of Walkenna. He rewards his supporters handsomely, and uh, those that offend him are punished with the severe punishment of seven angry sums, which is... Uh, yeah. It's a punishment that lasts for seven days, and each day uh, dawns, the citizens decide the next punishment to be. The seventh punishment is always imposed last. So basically, one through six is depends on the uh, the vote. The authorities in Mazali declare that no one has ever survived or escaped this punishment, but some people have claimed to do so. So, again, one through six can be rearranged. One, left, face, uh, uh, left fl- floating face up in the swamp. Two, tied to Uroks and dragged through the bush. Three, stripped naked and stung by dozens of aggro scorpions. Four, uh, force-fed hallucinogens and flung into obsidian mine pit. Five, sharpened reeds are threaded beneath the skin. Six, packed into a pit of salt. And seven, staked out of the desert and left to die of exposure. Ew. Yeah, I mean, like, it's really, they want to really kill you. So, Wakana is a child-sized undead, rules over this place, um, of some fallen empire, he wants to bring back glory to the old uh, Mazali Empire, but it's kind of like a mix-up in the mind and stuff like that. Uh, he was born a few decades before the family's fall. Ruled as a child of a god, the sun god uh, Kohar, basically descended of that, but gained the cruelty through undeath. Keep that in mind. So was a ruler at one point in time. Died of natural causes at that young age. And it was the Assyrian process of mummification that we used on him. So yeah. He was buried in a tomb intended for a famous gladiator. So basically that's what, why he was missed. He was buried in a different tomb. And so yeah. And so he does have a church worshipping him, basically, followers, instead of religion after him. His priests smash all of these statues and temples in Mazali, editing history to his liking, destroying the rest. The old sun gods, which were already declining, have all become forgotten and erased by what he's co-opted. Um, he is still connected to Kohar. Because both Wakan and Kaur are both gods of justice and claim to be Kaur's descendant when he acknowledges those old gods at all. Kaur does hate his cruelty, merciless justice, and tends to show his descendant, his descendant the true meaning of righteousness. So, Kohar, as a deity actually worshipped, is against him. And uh, Luhar finds it revolting that people took his corpse from the crypt and put him on display and tends to give him a more beautiful death than the first one. So, he isn't in good crypt. And there is a rebellion group against him, which we can talk about just briefly here. Um, he has a group called the Bright Lions, who are basically planning a rebellion against him. So yes. But that comes down to a little bit about the society that's going on in this city, which we should talk about a little bit briefly here. Oh, and um, keep in mind here, too. Economically, if you are in Mazali, you want to do trade be from the Mwangi expanse. Non-Mwangi traders are subjected to severe consequences which include execution or worse punishments, often. So it's very easy to see with all of this 
Masali is the center of Mwangi nationalism. Wakana seeks to unite the entire expanse under his rule and drive out all non Mwangi uh, from the entire region. If you're traded with outsiders, you're considered to be a traitor. And those that plunder the expanse's precious and irreplaceable resources for personal gain are especially hated. And despite the authoritarian government here, though, pilgrims still flock to the city, and the city still thrives. If you're non Mwangi, you avoid there. Or basically, you're worried about the uh, horrible things that have happened there. But since, here's an important note for recent, where the bright lines come up. Since the Sergavan government was overthrown by its native people, without Walkenna's aid. Walkenna did not help Sargava become the dream in the new nation, which is uniting the colonists and the, you know, natives there in a new government. Many are leaving Mozali, seeing this as a new place where a new version of the Expanse can come up, where peace can be had. And this is pissing off Wakana to all ends. So, he might be planning invasions of Verdrian, like a serious war, more than just trying to sack Halibuka. And then we have the Bright Lions, the rebels that basically want to defrone Walkenna and restore rule to the citizens, who see him as an overlord. The rebel group that's under him. Ah, yeah. And they wear the uh, cloak and dagger uh, war of attrition. Uh, no. Anyway, they um, they wage cloak and war against the regime of the child god uh, with their leader. Sihar, which is a former mercenary, who holds the teachings of the old sun gods close to her heart. Yeah. So, things are interesting in Mazali. You know? Anger at a nation that basically reformed itself to something new nearby and is attracting a lot of their people. You know, rebels under their mix. What's a powerful, you know, god-emperor undead mummy to do? Stats put them at a as of um, old editions. An oracle here fought at level twenty one, but that's uh, also old stats. It's probably different now. That was undead unleashed. If you want to go look up that book from twenty fourteen, that gave him some stats. At least his classes. Also, mummy, mummy oracle here Oh, uh, oh. Oh, here fans the oh mythic class of so Oracle Twelve Mummy. That's a mythic nine character here fan. So yeah, the mythic, the divine. Yeah, there's this Holly, an interesting place. I I really um, decided to talk about this place more because I read a little bit about it when I did my video on the Mwangi Expanse, but diving into it. It is such much more of an interesting place with this, like, diverse history, an old empire. I've heard about the mummy lord of this place, but even learning more about Wakana, their history, their belief probably that they are a descendant of a god because they were basically raised in that. You have to think, Wakana, when alive, was the last child of a, was one of the last children of a long line of kings which believed themselves descended from a god. Of course, eventually, even if someone declared early on, your descendants are just going to believe that. So whether or not he, he was or not doesn't matter. What kind of believes that? That's something ingrained in his mind from that time period. He's also very Tutankhamun, child king kind of thing like that. Young ruler, died, but very powerful. Very powerful magics that were useful in defending the city. But again, kind of hasn't left the city. Hasn't gone to the field himself since that first attack. He sent his forces there. But does he have enough forces to fight about it at this time? Does he have enough strength? There's so many questions of whether a war versus Adrian can occur. What will happen now? What's going to happen with Mazali? Because Adrian's formation has changed the region. The birth of a new nation, very recently, has changed the way the region is. Destabilized it in some regions, 
given change in a lot of reasons. So, I, I could expect, you know, maybe some point in time we could see an adventure in the Zala dealing with its own rebellion or stuff. Or, maybe some other adventure somewhere will hint at what's happening. I, I'm interested to see the stories that are there. But with a powerful creature like uh, Walkenna, I definitely see an adventure or a small adventure path being more connected to Will Will we see that in the future? I don't know. But it is an option, and certainly speaking, hey, if uh, Pies is not going to pu pu uh, publish it, you could run that there, too. Overthrow a uh, semi-god? Sounds like a mythic adventure to me. When the new second edition mythic stuff comes out, hint, hint, wink, wink, or you can do first edition. But they already But yeah, either you can. Anyway, that'll be it for today. I hope you enjoyed diving into uh, more places in Galarian and Mazali this time. Uh, certainly speaking, whether you're joining me, of course, live over on Twitch, which they're over there, or if you're joining me over on YouTube later on, everybody just give me some basic support there. You know, follow on Twitch is really great. Uh, like and subscribe and ring the bell over on YouTube to help appease the algorithm. Uh, have any of you dealt with uh, that area of the Mongi Expanse, Mazali, or anything that's going on there? Um, it's an interesting one because I feel like there aren't a lot of adventures that have been published that deal with that. So I'm, I'm curious if any players out there have had adventures there themselves. Um, and visit us. Uh, just a little curiosity. I have social media link below, Discord, Twitter. If you want to see stuff like this live uh, before it goes up on YouTube in a few days, uh, that's Tuesdays, Thursdays. Thursdays is usually the Pathfinder day where I do one of my Pathfinder videos for the week. Um, Pathfinder First Edition game on Wednesdays at 9. Crimson Queen. Check it out. And discussing table up Saturdays at 6. Check that out. Talk about news of the week deeper discussions into tabletop things that help people out there be better players and GMs. Alright, everybody. I'm going to get going. I'm going to hang out with Twitch for a little bit. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe uh, in the future you guys can either join me live or just, you know, throw something in the chat. Just even if you just say hi sometimes over on YouTube. But anyway, uh, until that next time, though, I bid you all there a deep and wonderful farewell.